So I think it is time for our next presenter. I'm not sure that I have a Swiss watch. Marco can tell me. <laughs> so <laughs> it is my pleasure to bring in front of you today Marco Bernasconi. I think I'm saying Bernasocchi. I'm sorry. I hope I'm saying you right. <laughs> So Marco, together with his team at OpenGIS, uh, CH is bringing important contributions to the entire GIS project. Uh, so um, you'll be seeing him around and his colleagues in the in the Phosphor G conferences and gather social gatherings and so on. Uh, today, Marco is going to talk to us about the Q-Field uh, Cloud. So without any further ado, Marco. Thank you very much, Codrina, and hi, everybody. Um, yes, as Codrina said, today I'm going to um, try to, to show you what Q-Field Cloud uh, can do. Um, I am uh, Marco Bernazocchi. I'm the chair of uh, the QGIS uh, project, and um, I am the CEO of OpenVIS.ch. If you want to follow what I do, what I say, and things like that, at Amber Nazocchi or Mark at OpenGIS.ch is where you can find me. Now, let's go back to QField Cloud. Um, a bit of context. Why do we need QField Cloud, first of all? Well, that's um, pretty easy. It's because QField is basically taking over the world. So we have uh, users everywhere. We have uh, plenty of users uh, with the latest version of QField uh, 1.9.6. We have uh, more than 400,000 downloads and um, <clears throat> more than 110,000 monthly active users. So. Um, this is this is pretty massive, and and when when we see this, um, we we have to think to make the life of so many people as easy as possible, and that is why um, today I have the pleasure to announce that finally QField is available for Windows machines and especially something very new, something that I really, I'm really happy to announce today is that also everybody that has been asking about QField on iOS, on your Apple devices, starting from uh, the day before yesterday, uh, we actually have pushed QField um, on uh, test flight. So it's out there. It's um, you can join. Um, you can you can install it with uh, test flight. It's in beta, obviously, but it's out there for everybody to try. Uh, you can go to qfield.org/get and you'll get automatically redirected to um, whatever platform you have. Now, um, all those people, all those active users, um, we've been talking to many of them and. A lot of them told them, hey, look, we're working online. And a lot of them told us, well, we're looking to work offline in, in places where we do not have any connectivity. So we have um, some issues when, uh, <clears throat> when we go offline and don't have connectivity anymore. The data is, um, is, uh, is not um, synchronized. We need to get back with the cable and so on and so on. So that. Uh, that is, is why we actually came up with something like um, Cupid Cloud. The other reason we heard very often was um, we have teams, um, we need roles, we need conflict management. So those are kind of the things that we kept on hearing our user telling us that we should do, we should do something to make it uh, more easy for them to work. And this is what actually QField Cloud can do for you. And what I show from now on is um, screenshots of the um, version of QField Cloud that is available uh, on qfield.cloud. You can register. It is currently in a, in a beta, uh, say in a semi-closed beta. <laughs> we are basically opening it up slowly to the people that were in the waiting list. 
Uh, we've had uh, a waiting list open for a long time, and we've had a lot of interest. We had more than 5,000 people in the waiting list uh, at a certain point, and now we are basically opening up accounts from the waiting list. As soon as the waiting list is empty, we will open up completely uh, the infrastructure for registration immediately. So what I want to do today is just go through what you can do with Qfield Cloud in its current status. I took all the screenshots yesterday, so it's it's brand new. I actually have a couple of screenshots from the development version in it with fixes that uh, actually some couple of features that we did today as well. So it's it's really the newest you can get you you'd see today. Obviously, it all starts with your account, and that's when we log in and we get to. Uh, your own personal projects. You get to your own place where you see what you're involved with, uh, what kind of projects you have, which organization you're a member of, and so on and so on, where do you live, etc. cetera. Um, this is pretty much something that uh, people probably know from platforms like GitHub or GitLab, if you're using some of those. It's it's kind of your home where you see where what kind of things, what is happening, what's the status of the project. I mentioned we do have organizations. Um, I, as M Marco Bernazocchi, I am a member of two organizations, uh, which we saw earlier on, openjs.ch, which is the one we use for work. And then we have the Honey Honey Incorporated, which is the one that we use for demonstration. Um, and, um, and here we can see that the Honey Honey Incorporated has teams. So Qfit Cloud supports teams. So you can create teams that have different members and different roles, which means that um, when you are creating a new project, um, oh, sorry, in the organization itself, you can add the user with a certain role. So it can be a member, it can be an editor, it can be an, uh, an admin. And this gets reflected then on the project. Obviously, you can then go on and do it project-wise. We'll see it later on when we get into the project to say which kind of um, uh, which kind of permission the user has on a certain um, on a certain project. Next step is obviously choosing a project. Here we are looking at the um, super test project by Honey Honey Corporation, and here we see the two people are involved. Um, there are five project files in the. Um, <coughs> there are five files in the project, and we have had three changes there. So, pretty easy way to see the status, um, what's happening, and uh, when were the last changes on the project, and so on and so on. Up on the top left, the um, the logo is actually a generated little overview of the project, the, the QGIS project that we have in the background. If we go into more detail, um, we click on files. We'll see what kind of files are part of our cloud project. Um, what do we have there? Where well, we have some geo packages in this case. Uh, we have a QGIS project. And down at the bottom, we see also some um, images that were taken on the field. So here we can follow kind of a versioning of all the files that were pushed to the cloud, all the changes in the in the data, all the changes in the project, and so on and so on. So here, um, big overview of each file at each different version of the file. And the next step that we have is seeing the changes that were done. So while here we can say, well, we do have a certain amount of files that have their own versioning, which I can download as well as a certain uh, as a certain time stamp. In the next uh, menu item, I can see the changes. I can see what actually happened. Um, were there changes from the field that were applied or were there conflicts? And we'll get into that later on. So here we can really see who worked when on the project and what was up, uh, updated. When uh, we have a change, um, we can click on a change and we'll get more detail. And, and this is part one of the things that I like most in uh, Qfield Cloud is that I actually can see what has changed in a specific change set. So uh, let's say I take here 
the first change set, I click on it, and I get the possibility to have a look at what attributes were changed, what geometries changes were done, and I get also the possibility to see a row change. For example, here we see that uh, it was an action of creating a new item. Um, it has a certain uh, feature ID, and there are there is a picture down at the bottom which you don't see much, and you see that a new point was created. Also on the bottom, we see a JSON representation of the row change. So if you would want to get that out of the tool and use it for your own uh, integration in something else, there is no problem. You could get that by API. Um, so very, very flexible um, ways to work. Next point I mentioned before, um, collaborators. Um, each project can have collaborators. And collaborators can be either a real user, like here we see Ivan Ivanov, or can be a group, a, a team. For example, we see here the demo users and the ninjas team are both added. <clears throat> the interesting part is that we can set per project a level of collaboration um, which is allowed to those users. For example, the demo users are allowed to be are set to the role of reporter, which means that they can only bring new information. They cannot delete existing information. Then we have the ninjas group, uh, which are managers. They can do plenty of things. They have more or less the whole freedom. Uh, they are not as powerful as administrators. They cannot delete the project, but they can they can change a lot in the projects. And then we have uh, in this case even. Um, which has a role of reader, meaning that he can use the project on a read-only base. So he's not going to be able to push from QField to uh, QField Cloud. <clears throat> uh, next thing we can see, the jobs that, uh, that were um, performed by QField Cloud. We see when deltas are applied, we see who made um, the changes. Uh, we see at what time they were done, uh, what status they had. So here you really see the status of what's going on in the, in the cloud itself. Um, last point regarding projects is the settings. Uh, there's not much there yet. There is the ownership, which you can, uh, which you can change. You can set, you can give your project to somebody else. You can obviously delete a project and you can make a po project public. And then there is one more setting, which is uh, very important. It's uh, the override conflict setting, um, which when checked basically means that if you have conflicts, Qfield Cloud will automatically use the latest version um, that came in as a late, as a new as data. Um, this might be what you want, but also might be what you do not want. So take care, remember to go and check this setting and unclick it if you don't want conflicts to be managed automatically. This is um, an overview of uh, what the web interface looks like. What I'd like to show you now is a complete workflow via QGIS, um, sorry, from QGIS to QField via QField Cloud. So the first thing we do is obviously log in uh, in QField Cloud using the QField Sync plugin. If you've been using QField before, you already have the plugin. One very important thing is that we are absolutely committed to keeping QField working the way that it used to be. We are not locking you in into QField Cloud. You don't have to have an account for QField Cloud if you do not want. You can still use QField the very same way that it has always been um, because we believe that that's the way that it should be. QField should work also simply by cable or, or which, whatever integration that you've built so far. Once uh, you log in with your account, you can click on the, um, on the synchronize button and you'll get to see the same list that we saw earlier on the web. We'll see it in QField, uh, sorry, in QGIS. From here, we can click um, on synchronizing. We'll get the project that we are interested in. We can select it, click on it. Everything gets downloaded, whatever is needed. Then, um, we see that the project is downloaded. 
and it's opened. The, here, the little checkbox will show us that uh, the project is available available um, locally, and being bold means it is a project that we are currently actually using and seeing in the background. I can go ahead, I can change my project, I can add new data in QGIS, I can modify um, the rendering of the points, I can modify colors and so on and so on. And then I can just synchronize again and my changes get pushed. Here we see that I had changed the project itself plus I had changed the geo package. Obviously, this also works if you have a PostGIS database in the background uh, that will push the data up to the cloud the way that uh, um, in a seamless way, basically. Um, same thing if something happened on the field. Uh, if somebody changed something on a field and pushed it to the cloud, we can from here download the data from the cloud. The one thing that we are still missing currently and we are implementing is a, a warning uh, for on the side of QGIS telling you, hey, you have something new on the cloud, you should download it. Currently, you need to have a look at the cloud and see if there is new things and then download it. QGIS is always seen as the master in this case. Um, advanced. Per layer actions, you can decide to ignore certain layers. You can decide to not use, uh, to, to do offline editing on certain others and so on, or just use them directly and then just push it. And this was if you want to get a project that already exists. Very often when you start, there, you're not a member of an, an organization yet, you're using your own project. So you take the project that you already have and click the, um, uh, create new project button, and which will start a wizard. And with this wizard, you can just click twice next, select where the project should be saved locally, go further, it gets converted, and it gets uploaded to the cloud, ready to be used in the cloud. And if we want, we can go and set the per layer actions uh, in the advanced settings if needed, and if not, um, do more changes if needed, and then push everything up. Once we have pushed everything up, it's time to move to the field. With QField, we can log in easy as well here with the button QField Cloud Project. And once we log in, we get a list of all the projects. We see here that we have the um, Honey Honey Incorporated Super Test Project, and I'm refreshing the list. Oops. Open the project, and I see the very same thing that I had earlier on in the desktop, but now I'm on the mobile. Same rendering, same powerful tools um, as we are used with QGIS. We can edit something um, on the field. We can uh, see that there was a change tracked with the little number one. We can go and push changes. And once we're done, we are up to date in the cloud. We'll see that now we have a new change. We see that there was a new value, something was created. We see a job delta was applied and it's finished. And we see that there is a new version on the um, on the cloud available. When I go back to QGIS, I can download this, which will replace my local file, and the three attributes get updated like it was in the field. I was planning to show you how to recover version data, but I'll skip this, and I'll quickly go to the um, field conflicts. So if we created a conflict in the field, um, we can see this in the conflict layer uh, in the conflict mask where we can choose either to ignore this change or to apply this change to the um, tool. Google Cloud is uh, released under an MIT license, so you can customize it the way you want, uh, implement it in, in your own workflows. You can, um, you can build on top of it. It's all on GitHub, go um, customize it, give back if you can, help us fix it, uh, give comments and so on. We are hosting it 
for you on qfield.cloud, or you can deploy it on your own cloud, obviously, with your own infrastructure. If you are going to use qfield.cloud, is in a secure and sustainable hosting in Switzerland. So your data are under very strict laws. And uh, we do have um, different tiered pricing uh, with a community version, which is free, a pro version, which is uh, for individuals that want all the, the features. And then we have a team version that is more for companies um, with multiple users. What's really interesting there is that we are actually only billing active users. If you have any questions, do not hesitate contacting us either at opengis.ch or via Twitter in one of all the handles. If you want to find out more, go to qfield.cloud. Um, Currently, you still have to subscribe to the waiting list because we haven't finished emptying it, but we're very soon uh, the, um, the list will be empty and uh, we will turn on the um, registration. Thank you very much and have a great first for G. Thank you very much, Marco, for the presentation. Um, let's see if we have any. Oh, you have a lot of hearts flying around in the venue list. <laughs> Good. Nice. Good, good. <laughs> Let's see if we have any questions. Um, I see nothing here. Um, if there's something, if there was one and I missed it, please uh, repeat it. But I think I didn't miss anything. Um, out of uh, maybe I would have one out of curiosity. Uh, you mentioned that uh, there is a um, a plan for if if using your your cloud, and you mentioned their larger data hosting. Um, could you give us a bit of an idea what larger means? Just no. What I said is that um, you can host it on your own infrastructure. Or um, on your on our own hosting, and basically the hosting that we are building is uh, going to be a um, software as a service uh, with limits on the. Um, let me just get to the correct slide mm -hmm. on the amount of users that you have. Here you go. Um, the um, what you've seen the screenshots now in the presentation where the team version where you have all the functionality for um, um, for, for for organizations as well, and uh, the pro version is mainly for a person that works by himself or that doesn't need uh, the organization part of thing. Yes, and what I meant what I mentioned about our own hosted solution is that. Um, yeah, it's going to be in Switzerland. Um, oh, it is in Switzerland already. It's not going to be so pretty strict uh, uh, law on data protection. Thank you. A couple of questions now. Uh, yes. Uh, so we have one. Do you have a plan to implement QGIS server on QField Cloud so it become uh, able to distribute web through QField Cloud seamlessly? Yes, that is something that we plan to do later on, not before release. So the f when we're going to go to general availability is going to be without that part. There is already a full QGIS. There is already QGIS running in Q uh, in Qfield Cloud. So uh, it's not going to be a big thing, but we definitely plan to, to allow that as well. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, now, when can we host Q Field Cloud on premises yes. or private cloud? Yes, you mentioned yes. Um, how about localization of GSS? I'm not sure I understand. Oh, GNSS? Yes, I think it's GNSS. Otherwise, I don't know what GSS stands for. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Maybe it's related to Smash still. Um, I mean, uh, Qfield Cloud. Uh, I mean, Qfield can deal with GN external GNSS devices that uh, deliver EMEA strings over Bluetooth. So I can answer that question for Qfield as well. The question mm -hmm. is: Yes, you get all the the EMEA. 
things in Qfield as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I see a lot. Uh, yeah, of it was for Smash. Yes. So, not sure <laughs> about Smash, but Qfield can. Okay. <laughs> so it's it's good. Um, checking to see. Oh, I see you're also here with a uh, Open Jazz. Uh, it's you, right? Yeah, or a colleague, probably. Yes, yes I told <laughs> a couple of colleagues check. there and, and answer as well during the chat. Okay, perfect. So we can both check, and we don't lose anything from from these questions. For some reason, I cannot see the question tab. For me, it's empty. So um, I'll have a look myself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, dear friend. Uh, can we host? About any connection? Yeah, we already answered all of them. Any connection with QGIS or other open source desktop GIS? Uh, well, I guess it's not for QFIT. Yeah, the that, yeah it was for Smash. Them. Yeah. Okay, so I think that is it. We have a few more minutes. If you'd like to add something, or we can have a little bit of break until our next uh, until our next presentation. So. Um, I can, I can show this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> but it's real. It's for real. It's here. Huh? See? Perfect. Perfect. I'm not converted yet. I mean, I take away the yet. <laughs> I <take laughs> from the other device, but very, very happy that we finally can, uh, we can uh, have everybody on board. Enjoy an amazing tool. Yes, so um, that's good. If you haven't tried Qfield yet, obviously go get it qfield.org slash get. And if not, uh, try Qfield Cloud. It's it's a pretty cool, or at least subscribe to Qfield Cloud. It's a pretty cool tool. Perfect. Okay, Marco. So I won't take any more time from you. Oh, one, sorry, one more pitch. Oh. Since we are here in okay. one hour. Dave Signer is going to show us all the amazing things that we have in Qfield in, a, in another talk. So. Yes, I'm going to introduce him as well. <laughs> so you are helping me a lot. <laughs> oh, <That's okay. laughs> it's good. Okay, Marco. So thank you very much for the presentations and for answering all questions and um, Enjoy phosphor and I hope to see you soon in person when you know things yeah. will, will allow it to a next phosphor or whatever other conference. So um thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.